Hey everybody, it's Alex here. Welcome to uh, my little world recap I'm going to do for you. Uh, now if you follow the, the Twitch, not the Twitch, the Twitter this weekend, you already uh, know how I did. Um, so this is kind of a pointless video for you to watch. But anyways, yeah, I'm just going to kind of go over the deck and what I played and how I did and everything. Um, the deck's in front of you here, but I'm just going to go over all my opponents real quick and how each matchup fared and how I won it and whatnot. Uh, I played a total of 14 games, so that tells you that I moved on to day two. That, that was the big, uh, um, you know, I you know I didn't have re a real ex expectation of me winning worlds, so I said to myself, as long as I can get day two, I'll be I'll be happy. So I got day two, got 40 points for 2016 already, so I'm at 55 already for next season. So I'm excited to go to San Francisco. I feel like I can make it again. So, um, anyways. We're going to get started uh, here. My round one was against uh, Bruno Eduardo Benetti from Brazil. And he was a really, uh, really fun guy um, from Brazil and lived abroad in France and spoke English very well. So he had three different languages that he could speak really, really well. Uh, and he was playing Lando Bats, which is um, a matchup I didn't test a whole bunch because I didn't think there'd be a lot of it. And then I saw it right away. But um, regardless, it was actually a pretty easy matchup. Um, because Adris, you know, the Age Slash and Kling Clang dealt with everything very nicely. Um, yeah, Landers couldn't do much of anything, and I just I kind of steamrolled it. Um, very nice guy, very awesome. I saw him a couple more times throughout the tournament, so and he was a, a cool person. Um, round two, I played against Johnny Rebus. Uh, Johnny Rebus is uh, a fairly well-known player. He was playing Night March. Um, really nice guy, really cool. Um, he's from the U.S., I think from, where is he from, Jersey area, I think. I'm, I'm probably wrong. I don't know exactly where Rapist is from, but he's a well-known player. He was playing Night March, and he got uh, both both game one and game two. He hit two battle compressor turn one, and he just kind of ran through me. I could never get Age of Slashes at the right time. Cling Cling, never get it at the right time. It was just a it was just a stomp. It was, it was not close. And, but he's a very good player, very good guy, so it was fine. Um, went to lunch at 1-1. Then I came back and played uh, uh, Kaichiro Muratsu, Kaichiro Muratsu from Japan, and he was playing uh, Primal Groudon. He didn't speak any English, so it was kind of hard to talk, and that was a little bit awkward. And I was already feeling down because I just got off a loss and lunch, mind you. Um, so I lost a, or I beat him because Primal Groudon is an auto win. You get clink clang up, and there's nothing that he can do. Um, Sorry, I'm getting text messages that are simply. Uh, I, I was a really easy auto win. Um, so, yeah, getting click, click, up. He had no backup attackers. I won that fan fairly easily. Um, round four, I played against Fadith Akhmedir. Akhmedir. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's from Germany. Very, uh, he was cool. He was playing Dragon Ray, and I was really surprised about that. He also played Bunnelby with it. Um, but at the end of the day, the thing that made me win was he mismanaged his double dragon attachments, and he wasn't going as hard with um, with uh, high dragon and uh, uh, restaurant as he should have. Um, so that was really interesting. But I 2 0 that one, got clink clink up early both games, and he just couldn't blow me up. Uh, next up was David Hausaker from the U.S. And he was playing uh, Archie's Blast Dorks, the deck that won it all. Um, actually, uh, we, I mean, we didn't really test that matchup. We really didn't know what to do in it. But um, I set up Kling Kling, and he was forced to attack with Blast Dorks at that point because his only non EX attacker was uh, Kiram. And uh, I one shot Kiram with everything in my deck. So um, it was very easy. He couldn't set up multiple Blast Dorks. So once I killed one, he couldn't, you know, if, even if he was trying to target Kling Kling down, which he did. He wasn't able to respond because he would lose his Blastoise. So um, that was a pretty easy matchup. I won that one 2-0 as well. Uh, and then I played against uh, Alex Bray from Australia. Really fun guy. I really enjoyed him. Uh, very thick Australian accent. Um, and that's what I got. I just loved hearing him talk. He was a fun guy. Um, we talked a lot afterwards on day two and stuff. And so he was fun. Uh, he was playing Night March. And our game went to, went to uh, time and he ended up winning because um, we agreed that a tie does neither of us good, so I let him have the game because uh, he was up on prizes during time. But anyways, I had, uh, it was one of the dirtiest ends to three I've ever seen in my life. I end him to three, and his top deck 
all the cards was a Dimension Valley, a DCE, a Night Marcher since he didn't have any on the field, and Lysander. And I was just like, holy crap, like how did I end you into the, into the god hand there? Um, but yeah, he ended up winning, he ended up winning that one, so I was 4-2, I needed to win one more to go in. And uh, I played against um, uh, Takashi Yoneda, who has a world champion deck. Where, you know, whether he's sign it and mass produce it. He's got one of those. So I was a little bit intimidated. I was like, oh man, this guy's very, you know, very well known. He's a really good player. Oh my gosh, where's he playing? And he was playing um, Bunnelby, the Bunnelby mill. So Bunnelby, Crawdont, uh, there's a Pyroar in there, um, Slurpuff, and Life Doom, and Shamans, obviously. And so the idea is to give it of all of your energies and uh, mill you at a very, over a very slow course of the game. Um, I was lucky enough that game one, his Litleo was prized. So, uh, and the deck doesn't take prize cards. So his Lulu was prized, so I never had to deal with Pyroar. Um, and I managed just to, you know, like, yeah, he can get rid of my metal energies, but if I set up Bronzong, I can just get him right back. There were a couple times where it was a little bit shaky because I couldn't retreat because he would put up, he zero sicked off Flow Stones and, and put Headbanger on Keldeo and stuff. But I was able to hit my AZs at the right time and pick up some stuff, so, um, I, I can't say that it was easy, but I won game one and then game two stalled out just because he can't win enough. And he, he took forever in game one, and I was trying to tell him to play fast because I was worried. But once he win game one. So I was in. And um, I was in. What is going on with my phone here? Uh, holy crap. Um... Okay, I need to respond to that text message later. It's making me think. Um, okay, so then game two, round two, uh, or day two rather, was a lot worse um, for me. Uh, round one, I played against Michael Diaz, who was playing uh, Night March, uh, and he straight housed me. I didn't have, I started alone shaman, didn't have supporters, that kind of thing. And I was just like, oh man, this is how day two is going to go. So no supporters, no nothing, Night March straight ran through me. Uh, game two, I played against Chris Collins from Utah. Um, he uh, he was running Garbo Toad, which is like almost an auto loss for this matchup. But uh, game one, he had to discard two of his DCEs early, and then attach a third one, and I could ball it off. So he was out of energy. He never got the lock permanently up, and I was able to take game one. He scooped it because he ran out of energies, and um, he scooped early so that we could finish, which I was a little upset about because I was like, oh man, I can stall this out for a tie, but. Uh, he scooped early. Game two, he he straight bodied me, and then game three, he played a team flare gun and an N in the same turn, and we both shuffled, so we both got a double game loss. So it was a tie. Um, I was thinking throughout the entire turn, I was like, man, I wish that he had uh, shuffled in first, and I just was like, yeah, I win, because uh, as dirty as I would have been, you know, you don't win against Garbo Toad. So, but taking a tie against Garbo Toad was fine. Um, you know, but I was starting 0 on one so I needed to win out at that point with a really bad resistance. So I, I was like, ah, I really don't have a shot at top 8 So I was just going to try to salvage a top 32. But then that was all thrown out the window. And the third round played Adrian Velasco from the Philippines. Uh, we ended up drawing. I won game one. And game two, he ended up winning um, because I prized both my Heatrans. Uh, no, sorry, I prized both my Age of Slash, one Heatran, and Michael Ballion. And I discarded my Heatran in my opening hand, like I had a Juniper, just straight Juniper away before I could look through my deck. And I realized I had no cards there. He was playing Trevenant Gengar, uh, which is basically an auto win because Gengar can't hurt you, and Trevenant uh, can't hurt Aegislash. So you put Aegislash up there, and what can they really do, right? And then it was so just like the worst luck I've ever had to prize four of my five attackers in that matchup. Um, so I ended up having to attack with Kling Clang. Uh, took a prize, got the Cobalion of all things. Uh, would have appreciated it, either of the other attackers except for Cobalion. So, um, just because Cobalion can't one shot uh, Tronin. So, that was kind of crappy. I ended up tying that game because he won game two and game three just never finished. So, we tied. Uh, round four, I played against uh, Hiroko Ozawa from Japan. Uh, she, was, she was a nice lady. Nice enough, I guess. She was playing Don Fan. And I got back on track with that. Donovan just doesn't have the damage output to deal with Age of Slash um, because it can't attach specials and you can do a whole lot of other cool things. Um, so Donovan was was a fairly easy matchup. I was I got I targeted down the Donovan's that were going to wreck quickly. So um, that was a fairly easy match. 
And then round five, I played against uh, Josh Marking, better known as uh, Squeaky from Team Fish Knuckles. So that was cool to play against someone like you know that was well known. I, I mean, I played against a lot of well known players, but he's like one of the faces of Pokemon right now just because of his channel. And he was playing Hippo Banom, which I never had practiced the Hippo matchup, and uh, I realized I played, I misplayed a lot in his matchup, and um, I wish I had done better there. Um, misplayed a lot. Uh, focus sashes on hippos are just hard to deal with, and um, yeah, it was just weird. I lost uh, two out of him. He's a he's a cool guy though. He's actually like you think he'd be. So I, I enjoyed playing him. Um, then round six, I played against uh, Nicholas Leinart Rappel from Germany. Nicholas. Uh, he was playing hippos. Uh, and this was actually my second down pair of the day. I got a lot of down pairs. My opponent's win record. Day two is not very good. Um, everything. Okay, so yeah, uh, he another hit though. When I knew how to do this matchup, the matchup works where you have to attack with Kling Clang, and hopefully you hit heads and put 20 damage on all their hippos so that the focus sashes don't take into effect, and then you attack with Heatran. Um, that's how the matchup works, and um, that's how it worked against Nicholas. I ended up flipping a whole bunch of heads. On Kling Kling. I ended up flipping like four in a row to put 80 damage onto a, a hippo, which saved me because he he would he was holding on to a Pokemon Center Lady and he could have uh, had you know bought an extra turn for himself. But I two owed him. Uh, fun guy though. We we talked a lot. It was a really close games. Um, and then round seven, two two and two, going up against Dylan Bryan. Uh, personally, one of my favorite players ever. I I've always played a lot of his decks because he's. I think he's got a similar play style of mine. I really enjoy what he does. And this deck is actually Dylan Bryan's list with one card changed. So it was kind of weird to be like, oh man, I'm totally playing the deck that you got fifth at US Nationals with um, against you right now. This is weird. But he was playing a, a very funky Raichu variant with, uh, there was Raichu in it, Tropius, um, a Terrakion, a 1 1 Bronzor line, a 1 1 uh, Colorless Ray line. Um, and it was a really fun deck, and I enjoyed playing with him and talking with him. And we we went to game three, decided about who was ahead on prizes would go, and uh, time was called about ten seconds after I played a Colrus, which I, if time was called before, then I probably would have been up because I had a Lysander in my hand, yada yada. But I ended up losing to him because we just agreed on the prize thing and um, gave him the game. And so I ended up day two, two, three, and two um, after going five and two day one. But I still made day two, still got 40 points, still met a lot of really cool people, played against a lot of really good players, um, excited that the championship is back in the U.S. and back in the Pacific Northwest. Um, that's a really cool thing to have a, a world champion this close to home. Uh, but yeah, this is the list. Um, I mean, this list has been public for about two months now, so there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's, it's perfect. I wouldn't change anything. The only reason, the only thing that I changed from Dylan's list was that he played three Aegis Slash and no Cabalion, and I, I changed it to Cabalion just because I, I figured there'd be a lot of Night March, and it gave you an option against Toad. And Cabalion really shined through in about two different matchups. Um, shined big in the Trivenant matchup, um, game one, that is. And then the other one was the um, Dragon Ray matchup because I was able to just knock off his double dragons, and he couldn't do anything after that, so. Um, it's a solid list, like, it's it's consistent, it, it does its job, the eight, I, I wish I played two AZs, and maybe that's the only thing I would change, because uh, it was prized in a lot of crucial scenarios. Uh, the cards you can't see down there, it's uh, it's two floatstones, three double colorless, and seven metal, it's down there. So, uh, it's a pretty straightforward looking list, you've been looking at it this entire video, so, um, if you have any questions, I guess, ask. Um, so yeah, that's how I did. I can't wait for San Francisco next year. Boston was a cool city. Got to take in a Red Sox game. And, um, yeah, well, that was my trip. And it was long. I was up for 36 hours yesterday and pretty, still pretty tired. But, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions or anything, let me know. Get excited. There's a lot of changes coming to the website soon. We're going to add in actually a few more people. So we're going to have about four or five people on this website working together and making it uh, an actual thing. So thanks for watching. Catch you next time.